I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and this is our Spark Plugs 101 video. Spark plugs are one of the most important parts on your motorcycle, ATV, and side by side when it comes to creating combustion. Now, the spark plug is a device which takes the electricity that's provided from the ignition coil to create the spark. Now the spark is created from a gap in the plug that the electricity must travel across in order to find its path to ground. And when it does this, it creates the spark, in turn igniting your air fuel mixture, which creates the combustion. Now spark plugs come in all different shapes and sizes, and there's a lot more to them than you'd think. So in today's video, we're going to talk to you about the parts of a spark plug, the heat ranges, setting the spark plug gap, and what to look for when it comes to inspecting the coloration of your spark plug. There are eight main parts to a spark plug. We've got the terminal, the insulator, the hex body or seal, we've got the gasket, the threads, the insulator tip, the center electrode, and the ground electrode. The spark plug terminal is what connects the spark plug to the ignition system. Now there are two different types of spark plug terminal connectors. We've got the threaded type and the stud type. Now there are three different configurations of the spark plugs terminals themselves. We've got the solid terminal stud, and we've got a threaded terminal stud and a removable terminal stud. This is just where the spark plug cap connects to the spark plug. The spark plug's insulator is made of ceramic and has several purposes. It helps to stabilize the center electrode. It extends the connecting point above the cylinder head for ease of access and also helps to prevent what's called flashover. Now flashover is when the spark jumps from the terminal across the insulation to the hex body or shell without the spark actually entering into the combustion chamber. Now the ceramic also helps to control some but not all of the plug's ability to dissipate heat as it does protrude slightly into the cylinder head's combustion chamber. The hex allows for the spark plug to be easily installed and removed. Now the most common sizes of the spark plug's hex is 5 8 inch and 13 16 However, there are other sizes of the spark plug's hex which range anywhere from 8 millimeters all the way up to 1 inch or more. The gasket on the spark plug ensures a tight seal between the plug and the combustion chamber. Now the gasket on the spark plug will crush during installation which will ensure the seal. So before you install your spark plug or spark plugs, make sure that the gasket and the mating surfaces are clean to ensure that you get a good seal. The spark plug's threads are measured in three dimensions, how far the threads reach, the diameter of the spark plug's threads, as well as the pitch of the spark plug's threads. The insulator tip is ceramic and can vary in length as to how far it protrudes from the spark plug. And so basically how much of the insulator's tip is being exposed to the combustion will determine a portion of the spark plug's heat range. Now this is also the area that we will inspect to see how our bike's been running, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to inspection. The center electrode is what emits the spark, in turn igniting our air fuel ratio, which gives us combustion. Now, the center electrode can consist of several different types of precious metals, including iridium, platinum, and rhodium, all of which are able to withstand extremely high combustion chamber temperatures without melting, and they help to prolong the plug's life. Now, some of the tips are designed to resist fouling or create a more effective spark. The ground electrode is what provides the path to ground for the electrical current that's coming from the ignition coil. So it travels through the center electrode, jumps the spark plug's gap, and finds its ground through the ground electrode. Now this ground electrode can be coated with various types of precious metals, including iridium and platinum. Now this is to increase the spark plug's lifespan, as well as to help it operate efficiently while it's being subjected to those extremely high temperatures inside of the combustion chamber. Each letter and number on the spark plug identifies the features and functions of the plug. The letters and numbers will vary in definition from manufacturer to manufacturer, each with their own meanings. NGK spark plugs, for example, their letters and numbers can range anywhere from five letters and numbers to approximately eight or more. Now the letters and numbers can identify such things like thread diameter, thread reach, construction, firing end construction, heat range, plug type, and gap. Now not necessarily in that order. For more information on decoding the letters and numbers, reference the spark plug manufacturer's website or give them a call for more information. The spark plug's gap is the distance measured from the center electrode to the ground electrode and is either measured in millimeters or inches and sometimes both. 
The gap size is usually set to a specific distance determined from the spark plug's manufacturer that can range anywhere from 20 thousandths of an inch to 80 thousandths of an inch, but can be adjusted for specific applications. Now, on some spark plugs, the gap size can be determined by referencing the letters and numbers on the spark plug with the manufacturer. You can always reference your service manual to find this information. Now, the service manual for this YZ250 right here states that the spark plug's gap must be between 0.5 millimeters to 0.6 millimeters or 20 to 24 thousandths of an inch. The spark plug gap is important because it can affect everything from firing temperatures to the efficiency of the combustion. Now, if the gap is too small, it can cause pre-ignition, detonation, incomplete combustion of the air-fuel ratio, and even engine damage. Now, if the gap is too large, the ignition system may not be powerful enough or efficient in order for the spark to jump the plug's gap. In turn, can create a misfire, a loss of power, poor fuel economy, and or plug fouling. Now, it's always best to follow your vehicle manufacturer recommended settings when it comes to setting your spark plug gap. However, if you have made modifications to your engine, changing such things as your compression ratio, changing the fuel and or the air fuel ratio, you may want to look into adjusting your spark plug's gap in order to compensate for these new changes. The color of your spark plug's tip can tell you a lot about what's going on inside of the combustion chamber. By inspecting the spark plug's tip, you can determine quite a bit, but for starters, you'll want to check the tip to see if the plug has been running hot from a possible lean condition or if it is beginning to foul or is fouled from a possible rich condition. Now, a normal looking spark plug's tip will typically show a brown to grayish tan color with little to no carbon deposits. A foul plug can be dark in color, if not black, sort of sooty looking, usually from too rich of an air to fuel ratio. Now, what else can cause this is poor compression, poor combustion, and or oil getting up past the piston rings and into the combustion chamber. Now, when you're inspecting the tip of the plug, it'll typically be wet and black from oil fouling, or it can be dry and black from carbon fouling. Either way, if your plug is beginning to foul, we recommend that you just go ahead and replace it with a new one. Now, an overheated plug will be white in color and will show excessive wear, especially to the center electrode as well as the ground electrode. Now, these previous descriptions are only but a few observational signs of what could be taking place inside of your combustion chamber. Now, there are several more that can show you signs of pre-ignition, gap bridging, as well as detonation. Now, keep in mind that there are a lot more than that. Those are just to name a few. Now, it's always a good idea to be swapping out your spark plug regularly, and this will not only help you to get to know your bike and how it's running, but also ensure that you get the most out of your machine's ignition system. Now, while you're changing out your spark plug, it's not a bad idea to pick yourself up a gapping tool, and this will make your life a lot easier when it comes to setting the gap before you install your plug. Now, for those of you running a two-stroke, picking up a spark plug wrench will make your life a lot easier, as well as picking up a spark plug holder. Now, a spark plug holder will not only help you to protect your spark plug, but will also help to protect the spark plug gap that you've just set, especially while you're transporting it either in your backpack or your toolbox. Now, for those of you riding a four-stroke, we all know that the spark plug is a little more difficult to access than compared to a two-stroke, so having a spark plug socket will definitely make your life a lot easier. The heat range of a spark plug refers to the speed or rate at which it can transfer heat from the combustion chamber to the cylinder's head. Now, each plug's manufacturer is going to have a different rating system of letters and numbers, each of which will indicate that plug's heat range. Now, NGK, for example, the smaller the number will indicate a hotter heat range, and the higher the number will indicate a colder heat range. Now, the spark plug that is chosen from your vehicle's manufacturer is going to be the best one for optimal engine performance. Now, the only time that you'd ever want to be making adjustments to your spark plug's heat range is if you're modifying such things as your compression ratio, ignition timing, or you're running alternate fuels. Now, even when making changes to the heat range, you're going to want to err on the colder side of things as opposed to the hotter side, as it's a lot cheaper to replace a fouled plug than it is to replace a damaged engine. A gasoline engine's optimum combustion chamber temperature range is between 500 and 800 degrees Celsius or 932 degrees Fahrenheit to 1,472 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, once the combustion chamber is able to reach this optimum temperature, it can burn off what are called combustion deposits. Now, if the chamber never reaches those optimal temperatures, those combustion deposits will adhere themselves to the spark plug in turn fouling it. Now, if the spark plug's tip is to exceed that temperature range, the spark plug's tip will overheat and can cause such things as pre-ignition and also has the potential to lead to further damage to your engine. 
And that's it. That's our Spark Plugs 101 video. Now, if you have any questions as to what we've discussed here today, feel free to leave us a comment below and we'll be sure to get an answer back to you. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more product spotlights, how to's and top fives. And also see our website at RockyMountainATVMC.com where any order over $75 ships for free. I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain. Thanks for watching and keep the wrenches turning.